Welcome to today's media availability. With us today is Minister of Health Tyler Shandro and Dr. Paul Boucher, President of the Alberta Medical Association. Minister Shandro will begin with a few comments and then we'll hear from Dr. Boucher. Thank you. And uh, first of all, before I start, I just want to provide congratulations to Dr. Alika LaFontaine, uh, an award winning physician who practices anesthesia in Grand Prairie, who is elected today the uh, 2022 uh, president of the Canadian Medical Association. So on behalf of government, on behalf of all Albertans, congratulations, Dr. LaFontaine, and um, our, our best wishes to you. We know that uh, you're going to be representing Albertans very well at the, the CMA as the uh, first the, the president-elect and eventually next year the, the president. So congratulations. I also want to start off by pointing out the tremendous work of Alberta's 11,000 doctors as we've responded to the COVID pandemic. The pandemic has been relentless, impacting every doctor in Alberta, just as it's impacted every Albertan. We all know doctors in our communities who give their time selflessly. Over the last year, we have seen some truly extraordinary efforts caring for our families, caring for our neighbours, caring for our communities. And Albertans from across the province are so grateful to doctors who, along with other healthcare workers, have made great personal sacrifices and changed their practice to ensure that Albertans have continued access to the best healthcare that they need. Now, the, the last year has been difficult for us all. And during the, uh, the pandemic, our government and the Alberta Medical Association never stopped working to reach a provincial agreement for doctors. And we've been clear, patient care and fiscal sustainability, those were our highest priorities if we were to consider a new agreement with the AMA and one that is fair and equitable for physicians. So three pillars, fiscal sustainability, patient care, equity for physicians. And those three, phys uh, those three pillars have been at the top of my agenda through all discussions, and they, as they have been since becoming the Minister of Health. Our government is accountable to taxpayers, and COVID made the tough economic situation worse. We've seen the impact of black swan events hit our economy and resulting job loss across the province over the last 12 months. With little relief, expected uh, for, for us in the near term. And what a partnership with the AMA and doctors means is that the fiscal goals can be met. And they can be met in a way that supports patient care and equity for doctors. Engagement with doctors, that's what's informed the key changes to the new funding framework that we announced last February. And it still shaped the, the negotiations that we've had over the last year. Let's remember that we continued after the, the new funding framework for doctors was announced last February, um, that, uh, that we continue to meet in, in March to June and then picking up significantly in September, recommitting to working together. Both parties came to the table with an understanding of what was important to each other, what was expected of each other. We understood the importance of collaboration and we did all of that while respecting our differences so that we could achieve an agreement. Now, at the core, we started with a commitment to achieving something that's in the best interests of all Albertans, in the best interests of our healthcare needs. We and the AMA have never stopped meeting and never stopped learning from each other during the pandemic. These discussions, these conversations, allowed us to better understand each other, and this has resulted in the best possible agreement. Discussions were, were challenging, but they were productive. And we pushed each other to find the right solutions to the complex issues in our universal and public health care system. These discussions allowed us to look at the complex issues where we had similar goals but different perspectives on how to achieve those goals. These negotiations tested us. The discussions were hard, they were difficult, but they never uh, they also helped us to, to strengthen our relationship as we got a new appreciation for each other's perspective. And these discussions led to a mutual understanding that firmly positions us for the future and a new relationship. 
a new way of talking with each other, a new way of sharing information for the benefit of doctors and the benefit of patients, a new way of interacting with each other. And so today, I'm pleased to join Dr. Paul Boucher, the, the president of the Alberta Medical Association, to announce that the government of Alberta and the Alberta Medical Association have reached a tentative agreement. The AMA will now take the first steps toward ratification and our government will support their efforts. I'd like to thank Dr. Boucher. I'd like to thank the AMA board. I'd like to thank as well their senior staff at the AMA for their continued work. And I'm pleased that we can move forward and work together, building on what we've learned, uh, what we've learned from each other during this process to build a renewed relationship based on mutual understanding and trust. I'm confident that what we're presenting doctors with is an agreement that provides certainty, provides stability, and it does so in the best interests of patients, the best interests of doctors, and the best interests of all Albertans. I believe this tentative agreement outlines a framework which helps our government maintain a focus on those three pillars that I talked about. Fiscal sustainability for the province, the fair and equitable solutions for doctors that we need, and most important, a focus on patient care. And today, as we move forward together with purpose, we move forward ready for the future in the spirit of cooperation and a renewed respect. We still have much work to do, and I look forward to working with Dr. Boucher and the AMA to support the successful ratification of this agreement. Dr. Boucher will now share an update, and I'm hopeful that we will be able to provide you soon with a, another positive update soon. And so with that, uh, Paul. Thank you, Minister Shandro. I'm glad to be here today and wanted to thank you and your senior officials at Alberta Health for their effort and commitment in finding a way forward in the form of a negotiated agreement. This year of COVID-19 has changed the health care system and Albertans forever. I know that we will find a way through the pandemic, but we also need to look beyond it. A new agreement between the government and physicians will position us to get through COVID-19 and help us bring the health care system back to full strength so that it can be there for Albertans to provide the care they expect and deserve. I appreciate the commitment that Minister Shandro has recently made for a partnership with the AMA and the Physicians of Alberta to roll out COVID vaccines. The AMA looks forward to assisting in this monumental task that can only be accomplished with careful planning and intersectoral collaboration. Since Medicare began, agreements between Alberta's governments and their physicians have been a powerful and flexible instrument of positive change in the healthcare system. This includes strategies to enhance access to quality care, the creation of primary care networks, the use of electronic medical records, and the development and implementation of opioid response strategies. We now have an opportunity before us to continue this work in the form of this tentative agreement. This is a difficult economic time for the province, and while this tentative agreement represents a commitment to stay within the budget imperatives of government, it is much more than that. By allowing us to reestablish a working relationship, to bring our respective points of view, and collaborate towards patient-centered decisions, this agreement brings doctors and government back together to work through the challenges of delivering the quality care that the patients of Alberta deserve. As the Minister noted, it is based on three pillars. Fiscal sustainability for the province, fair and equitable solution for physicians, and of course, a focus on patient care. You will note that I've been referring to this as a tentative agreement. We have used that term because although it was negotiated on the behalf of Alberta's physicians, its merit will be judged by those physicians themselves before it can be implemented. Last night, the AMA Board of Directors determined that this agreement warrants the initiation of a ratification process and is worthy of our members' consideration. This means that we'll call a special virtual meeting of the AMA's representative body, our representative forum. This group consists of 148 representatives that represent each medical specialty, geographic region, primary care networks, the medical schools, groups in academic medicine, the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta, and importantly, representatives from our resident physicians and medical students. They will review the agreement in the coming week and then advise the board whether they support proceeding to a membership vote. The board will consider that input and then decide if a vote will proceed, and that process usually takes about three weeks. Thank you, and this concludes my remarks.
Thank you, Dr. Boucher. Uh, we'll now go to the phone lines for some questions. Uh, there are a number of calls on the line today, so we'll limit it to one question uh, per, per reporter. Uh, operator, please put through today's first caller. Dean Bennett, Canadian Press. Hi. Yeah, it sort of uh, underscores the problem with these news conferences. This thing raises dozens of questions, and I get one. So I guess it's this. Uh, Dr. Boucher, you're, uh, the, thru- the, the, the crux of the dispute before, when they canceled the master agreement, was you didn't have any real independent dispute resolution mechanism, uh, no arbitration, and you didn't want to strike. Does this uh, document include some sort of independent dispute resolution mechanism, such as arbitration, and what does this announcement say do to the lawsuit you have uh, over the master agreement? Um, thank you for your question. I guess, you know, the, the details that's within the agreement, you know, to give respect to the process, I really um, am unable to share them. Obviously, that's uh, of a grave importance to the Physicians of Alberta. And yes, you know, the, li- the lawsuit is, in fact, you know, tied up with all this. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the intention would be that if the, uh, the agreement obviously addresses the issues within our lawsuit, um, then, uh, you know, that would be, uh, uh, you know, we would, uh, uh, we would let that go. Um, so that's, you know, part of the whole process. But I think the details that's in the agreement, I think out of respect for the process, needs to go to our membership before we were able to share that with you. But thank you for your question. Dean, did you have one follow-up? Uh, well, it's tied, it's tied to, the, uh, to uh, what we're going to see and how things are going to change for doctors within the uh, document. But as, as Dr. Boucher said, uh, you don't want to release that at this time. So appreciate the follow-up, but uh, thank you. Thank you. Operator, could you please put through the next question? Operator? Audrey Nova, Radio Canada. Thank you. Hi, uh, my question is for Dr. Boucher. Um, I know you speak French, so I'll ask you to answer in uh, French and English if you can, please. Um, what will this agreement change when you compare it to the president? I know you can't go into the detail, but in the working relationship with the government, how will this change? And if I can get a follow-up, I would love to ask Dr. Chandra, uh, Mr. Chandra about the AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay, okay merci. Um, well, it's up to you. I can answer in English or French. Uh, but, you know, essentially, um, you know, ag- agreements traditionally, again, without being able to share the details of this one, you know, establish uh, uh, a very well-defined working relationship between the physicians of Alberta and the government. And, um, you know, without an agreement, you know, the, I, you know, there's still consultation that happens, but it's not really done in any um, uh, prescriptive way or in, in a defined forum. And so what these agreements provide, and this one is no different, uh, you know, provides, uh, you know, mechanisms to ensure that that communication and collaboration is happening and so that we can move forward with what's best for, you know, the health care of Albertans. So I don't know if that answers your question directly. Uh, uh, if not, je m'excuse, uh, mais c'est vraiment uh, pour établir une relation entre les deux. Yeah, so we'll now take the follow-up, Audrey. Yes, uh, Mr. Boucher, if you could just say that you have two complaints in French, it would be appreciated. And uh, Minister Chandler, can you tell us um, what do you know of the AstraZeneca distribution of the vaccines in Alberta yet? Do you know when we will get doses and to who it will be administered first? Because we know that it's maybe not best for elderly people to have this vaccine in particular. So a lot of those details are still being decided and figured out by uh, Health Canada and the um, uh, and, and NACI. Uh, but we understand that Canada um, will be getting about a half million doses uh, the exact timing, I can't speak to. That's for the federal government to speak to. Uh, since we usually get um, our allotment in Alberta on a pro, per capita basis, that could probably be no, 55, 60,000 for, for us. But the exact timing, the exact amount, we still haven't advised yet. Thank you. We'll now take the next call up. Please put the next person through. James Keller, Global Mail. Hi there. A question for the minister. We're expecting a decision on stage two of the reopening on Monday. You've indicated that barring any catastrophe before then, you expect that to happen. But at the same time, infections are increasing and we're seeing more of these variant cases. So what are you seeing 
that gives you uh, comfort for reopening and what do you see as the risks? And I'd actually also like to hear Dr. Boucher's perspective on this as well. What do you think about the prospect of us opening wider given the situation right now? Uh, thanks, James. And so just a couple um, things for everyone to remember. First of all, during each of these steps, uh, the activities that have restrictions eased will still have restrictions on them, right? We, that's an important thing for us to remember. Uh, we do have variants of concern in the province, and we do have some community transmission, but we are um, uh, testing, fully testing every positive case in the province, testing for the variant. We have uh, some full genome sequencing happening as well on positive cases. We are doing um, uh, tremendous work in being able to, to stop the transmission of uh, variant cases. Um, and, and as we said, as we were easing or stepping down restrictions through the path forward plan and basing those metrics on a lagging indicator like hospitalizations, if you remember, um, and we do ha see our hospitalizations, um, they've come down uh, tremendously. Um, they are well below the, right now, the, the, uh, the threshold for step two, that if we were to ever impose new measures, it would be on a leading indicator. So looking at um, depending on what our baseline for new cases would be, right now it is actually a low uh, uh, amount for, for our baseline right now. So it would be, I think, a, a 5% increase over a given week for, um, for our public health officials to come to us and start to look where there might have been transmission in the province, if it might have been as a result of any of the, the measures from a previous step that were eased, and uh, whether there, there could be targeted um, further measures to address where there could be community spread for us to impose further measures. So we've always said from the beginning that that's a possibility, uh, but we don't see that at this time. And so without seeing uh, our case count increasing by that uh, amount, though I, I don't see at this time that, that happening, but um, we still have to uh, review the last week's worth of data with um, and the, the full three weeks will be on March 1st. So when we review that full three weeks with our public health officials on March 1st, get that, that full three weeks, the, those are gonna be some of the questions we have. But, um, and, and that was the asterisk, the, the caveat that was put on it is, is whether we did see that kind of a concern over the last week and increases. I, I don't see that at this time though. Thanks, James. And the same question to Dr. Boucher. Oh, sorry, Dr. Boucher. Yeah, absolutely, I forgot about that. Sorry, James. Dr. Boucher. Sure, thank you, James. Uh, you know, I guess full disclosure, I'm not a public health expert, but I, I guess I have an opinion. It, you know, um, you know the, the, the lockdown and, and uh, you know, the effects of health on Albertans, you know, alongside the pandemic, you know, they're, they're really all intertwined. And I guess what I've appreciated, you know, as a physician, as a citizen of the, of the province is, you know, the transparency and the metrics that uh, the Alberta government has chosen and how they've been reporting on them. You know, I think we're all anxious in, in many ways about the new variants, but we're also anxious, anxious to see some of the restrictions, you know, lifted and trying to get back to, you know, some kind of what the new normal might look like. So, you know, I, uh, I, I don't really have a comment beyond that other than to say, you know, I appreciate the transparency and what the government's trying to do and, and to know that we're keeping a close eye on, on what's happening with the plan to move backwards if that's needed. Thank you. Thank you, operator. Could you please put through the next caller? Our next question comes from Bill Fortier, CTV. Hi, folks. Uh, since we're not guaranteed to follow up, I'm going to try to ask two at the same time here. First one's a bit of an easier one. Without, I know you can't give us details, but can you tell us, and this is to both of you, uh, if this tentative agreement works out to base salary the same amount for doctors, less or more than, than the previous agreement? Second question is, and again, this is for the minister, and I'm hoping for Dr. Boucher's response, in the budget yesterday, we're seeing uh, AHS salaries, non-physician salaries and wages going down over the next three years, but full-time equivalency is going up. So I can't imagine that means anything but uh, pay cuts. So I'm wondering uh, from, Dr. from uh, uh, Minister Shandro, who's going to be getting a pay cut? Is it nurses or who is it? And how much should they expect their pay cut by? And again, a response from Dr. Boucher to that. Thanks, Bill. And so first of all, and most importantly, to correct um, something really, really important, and it's that our physicians are non-employees and they aren't paid salaries. And that's um, a key 
um, uh, pillar of, of, of why we, we have the, the, uh, the, an agreement with, uh, a tentative agreement with the Alberta Medical Association because they are 11,000 uh, vendors who provide patient services to patients on behalf of government. And uh, I think about 89% of, of our billing for, for physicians is through fee-for-service. They aren't paid uh, salaries. So to a, a great extent, um, how much a physician uh, bills in a given year depends on the amount of referrals they might get. If they're a specialist, could depend on for their, uh, if they're a family physician. Um, it depends on whether they're in a major urban or in a rural setting, but how many times their patients come to see them. And uh, so they, they are not paid salaries, uh, but we, we have said in this agreement that uh, there are opportunities for us to continue to work within uh, what we've, we've budgeted for physicians, but also that we've said to the, the physicians through the AMA that we're not rigid on that, that there are opportunities if there's a government priority to, uh, like the Alberta Surgical Initiative, to be able to work with the AMA um, on, on those types of priorities that are, it's a, a government direction. And, and so uh, the second question about AHS salaries, that's a, a question for Minister Taves. That I'm going to defer to him. Uh, right now, the, um, the, the negotiations, first with the, uh, the APS, the Alberta uh, Public Service, is, uh, is, is ongoing. And the, the negotiations with the, the, the public sector unions in, in health are through his office. So I'll, I'll defer that, that question for, for Minister Taves. But Dr. Boucher, I suppose, uh, your reaction to the uh, the first question from uh, from Bill? Um, thank you. So, just for comment, I suppose you know there's it's been no secret that we've been um, you know engaged in a discussion around a budget-based agreement, and I think what's important to, to remember. Well, I guess I'd, I'd look at it in two ways. One is that um, you know. Uh, you know, controlling a physician services budget, uh, you know, has many different aspects to it. Uh, you know, one of which is related to, uh, uh, you know, rates. Uh, but there are other aspects, you know, that, uh, that exist or other levers that exist to try to, um, you know, control that budget and provide good value uh, to Albertans. And so, you know, within, you might imagine that within such an agreement, there are, there are pieces, uh, you know, to that solution uh, in order to try to achieve those goals. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, I, I am an EHS physician, but I, I really, you know, need to make sure you understand that I'm not a spokesperson for them. There are, there are some uh, physicians that are remunerated through payments from AHS. A lot of those are being examined, and the Medical Association is supporting many physicians groups through that process. Um, so it, it's a little bit difficult for me to comment beyond that, but, um, but that's uh, what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Operator, would you please put through the next question? Wiser, Global TV. I had this question for the minister. A medical nursing and healthcare students from across the province sent your office a letter asking to be included in phase one to receive the vaccine. Other provinces have vaccinated these students because they're in hospital doing clinical rotations, and federal vaccine guidance says they should be included in stage one of the rollout. Is this under consideration to include them, especially now with the AstraZeneca's approval? And just in case I don't get a follow-up there, I uh, wonder if there will be any changes at all to the roll-up plan given AstraZeneca's approval. Well, maybe I'll start with the, uh, the second question first and just to say that uh, we, we do have to, to meet with um, our, uh, our public health officials to be able to get their, their advice on this. Um, I, I, I think I was a little bit surprised that Health Canada did approve it for folks who are 65 and older. Um, there, I understand um, questions about the, the amount of evidence that we have for folks who are 65 and older. So I look forward to getting that advice in um, from our, our public health officials here in Alberta to understand um, how and whether there should be any changes to, uh, to uh, phase two priority groups. Um, but you're, you're, you're asking about phase one and whether people would be included in phase one. Phase one is, um, especially for our healthcare workers, I think substantially uh, completed for, for first doses. Um, whether they would be included in, um, well, I think there are opportunities for, for um, uh, those who um, are, are providing direct patient care to be included in 2C. Um, whether there's a concern of, of them not being included in 2C, I would defer perhaps to, to Dr. Hanshaw to be able to answer that question. Thanks. Thank you. Operator, would you please put through the next question? Tom Ross, 660 News. Hi. I uh, just wanted to ask about uh, the vaccine rollout as well. We've seen very long lines of uh, seniors who are, are waiting to get their shots, uh, even though they have made uh, timed appointments. 
is there any advice that uh, you can offer to, you know, cut down on these lines and maybe kind of speed up the process if it's possible? Well, first of all, um, just for everybody to understand, there are no uh, shortages of the vaccine for those appointments. So if you made an appointment, there is a vaccine for you. So there's no need. I do appreciate the anxiety that people have, um, and especially for, for these folks who are included in this, uh, um, this cohort of people who are getting their vaccines. And so everybody wants to, to be able to, to show up early, and they want to make sure that uh, they're going to get their vaccine. Um, I hope everybody understands they will get that vaccine with that appointment. There's no need for them. Uh, to have that anxiety, but I do appreciate it. I do understand it, and I do sympathize with it. Um, and, and I understand there are, there are a couple of locations in particular where that happens. So um, I also am advised by AHS they're doing their best in continuing to work. Where they have uh, uh, employees who are meeting people when they arrive, making sure that they understand there is no shortage. They're going to be able to get the vaccine for that appointment, encouraging people to not line up. And um, the but the, the the vaccines and those appointments are the the ones that are for for those vaccines that have been allotted. So uh, this is uh, also and just remind people because you, you asked a question, Tom, about speeding up. By the way, I think we hit a record yesterday, over eleven thousand vaccines in one day. Even though we have limited supply, even though we have difficulty with the logistics and getting these out um, and having that uh, supply limited, we hit another record yesterday. We're also providing vaccines for these folks much more quickly and uh, before other provinces are, for people who are 75 and older. There are some provinces who haven't even started for 85 or 80 and over yet. So this is because of our quickness in, in Alberta and getting these vaccines to those folks who are 75 and older. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. Operator, would you please put through the second to last question? Ashley Joano, Post Media. Hi, good um, afternoon. This is a question I suspect for the minister. I know you folks are trying to avoid talking about specifics until the deal is voted on, but I didn't hear a clear answer to this question, so I'm, I'm just going to ask it again, and I apologize if I missed a clear answer. The, the government said during the negotiations that it didn't want to exceed $5.4 billion in physician spending. Can you tell me whether the new proposed deal achieves that benchmark of not spending more than $5.4 billion? And, and I know it can be frustrating because we need, first of all, the physicians to have time to, to um, review the agreement to ratify it. And so that can be frustrating and, and how it gets reported and what the details are. Um, what, what, I, what I can say is that uh, and as, as we said for the last year, that the opportunity for an agreement with the AMA was to be able to work with them in providing predictability and stability for our physicians. That's when I meet with physicians, the number one thing that I hear, how can this uh, framework and how can an agreement within that framework provide me with predictability, provide me with stability. Um, and uh, when it comes to, to rates, when it comes to the budget, and uh, when it comes to pressures that certain physicians and their practices might feel with in inflation growth and or priorities for government like the Alberta Surgical Initiative. And so what I can say is that this agreement does consider those things and working with the AMA to provide that predictability and stability to doctors. Thank you. Operator, would you please put through the final question? Lauren Krugel, Canadian Press. Oh, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Um, back to the um, path forward plan. Um, the uh, Edmonton Zone um, Medical Staff Association put out a statement today raising concern about um, any uh, eased restrictions on Monday. But another thing they brought up was um, the fact that a lot of uh, bars, restaurants, and pubs seem to not be enforcing rules, seem to be overcrowded, and they're calling on the government to, in fact, um, impose more restrictions on them. Is that something that you're prepared to do? Or are those issues that you've identified? Well, maybe I'll just start with the enforcement piece. And, and just for, for folks to understand, I, I don't think anybody wants politicians to, to be involved in enforcement of, of laws, that we need somebody who's arm's length, uh, who is, whether it's our police, whether it's public health officials, in enforcing the laws. And that's exactly what we have throughout the pandemic. Uh, AHS public health officials um, have uh, shut down establishments that have flagrantly um, disregarded um, when, when the public health officials have tried to work with them and tried to educate if somebody is flagrantly um, you know, uh, contravening the, uh, the public health measures, then, then those uh, HS officials are shutting down establishments. Um, so if it's a question about enforcement, happy to, to pass on that feedback from the, uh, the Edmonton 
Medical Zoo, uh, Edmonton Zoo Medical Staff Association. Uh, when it comes to, to more measures, as we said, when it comes to stepping up measures, that we would be looking at whether there are increases in our counts and, and working with our public health officials on where those increases might be in the community and whether we can, as, as we have throughout the, uh, the last year, having measures that are targeted on where the evidence is showing that that transmission might be happening. And so we don't see this at this, this time, uh, but if that ever was brought to my attention by Dr. Hinshaw, of course, we'd want to work with her in being able to um, address any community spread that we have in the smartest and, and most uh, targeted and narrow way that we can to stop that community spread. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That concludes the uh, press conference for today. Thank you very much, everyone.